Hello everyone, welcome back. It is the most wonderful time of the year. I don't know if I enjoy fall more or if I enjoy anticipating fall more because I really like anticipating things. Welcome to my new home. Welcome to my new stitchy spot. I am all up in your grill today because I have tried to make my microphone stop making an annoying high-pitched sound as I use it and have been unsuccessful. So I'm going to try to talk a little bit louder because my phone sound is a little bit soft. I will bump it up in the editing so that you can hear me. We're going to talk all sorts of stitchy goodness today. If you don't know who I am, my name is Stephanie, and I am the designer behind the brand Lindy Stitches. I design cross-stitch patterns that make people happy. You can find them at lindystitches.com. Today I will be talking about all sorts of stitches. I have two new fall releases to show to you. I have my own projects, which don't include my own designs. I have a finish. I have a new start. I have a giveaway and I might do some questions because I put out a question sticker on my Instagram this morning. So we're going to have a long, luscious, stitchy chat, which I've been longing for for a while. I feel like it's been quite some time since I made just a casual video like this and I have missed you. I moved house and one piece that just has not gotten put back in the puzzle. It's like that box that hasn't been unpacked is just connecting with you. And so uh, let's just take a deep breath, relax, and talk about our favorite craft, shall we? First, I have two matters of housekeeping. Housekeeping! I, whenever I, I have a lot of word triggers. For the word housekeeping, I always think of Chris Farley in the hallway knocking on the door. Um, is that Tommy Boy? I think that's Tommy Boy. Housekeeping. Housekeeping matter number one is that I have a website. It is lindystitches.com, but it now no longer forwards to my Etsy store. Oh, my Etsy store. Yes, lindystitches.com. I built it. To be honest, most of it got built while I was on vacation, which I enjoy my work. <laughs> what can I say? I built my website while I was supposed to be on vacation. Um, it's really fun. I'm adding to it left and right and working on making it just a better resource for stitchers. Um, I got off Etsy for the most part. You can still find my PDF patterns in my Etsy store, but all my physical items, including my patterns, my scissor birds, my lady dot trims, uh, stitching fabric, all that stuff is now on lindystitches.com. And I think it's a colorful, lovely website, so make sure you go check it out sometime. Want to know why I got off Etsy? Maybe I'll talk about it in a different video, but not right now. The second thing I want to tell you, the second matter of housekeeping is a uh, pattern keeper. I finally downloaded this app just to see what all the jazz was about. And you're right, all you 58 people that, that talked about it in your floss tube videos, you were all right. It is amazing. And so I want to share with you that all of my larger, more complicated patterns are pattern keeper friendly. I am going to scroll them quickly right here as I talk about this matter, but I checked all of these patterns. The only pattern that got funky and cannot be used in the app pattern keeper is Mary Mary. And so I went ahead and reformatted her, reformatted her to be usable in Pattern Keeper. If you already own the PDF of Mary Mary Needleworker and you would like a Pattern Keeper friendly 
version of that PDF file, go ahead and email me, staff at lindystitches.com, and I will forward that to you. And from now on, um, if a pattern is, say, bigger than one page, I am planning on making sure there's a pattern keeper friendly PDF version attached to just the regular PDF listing so that you can use it either way. Uh, pattern Keeper is a little bit mystifying as a designer. It seems to not like certain things. I don't know. Like, you think you've figured out why it doesn't work for certain patterns and it will throw you a loop and I don't know. I figured out a few tried and true things of what not to do that Pattern Keeper doesn't like, but I can't say that I for sure know all of its ways. I don't know. Are you ready? Are you ready? For my new releases. I'm releasing four patterns this fall, two this month, two next month. If you are waiting for Macbeth, you're going to have to be patient. It's coming out in September. But if you are waiting for Dracula, wait no more. It's here, friends. Ready? Here's what happened with Dracula. I was reading it last fall in 2019 for the second time. I love Dracula so much. The novel. The classic novel. And... This is going to be a little book, book chat slash uh, show you my new release because I can't help myself when something is Dracula inspired. Let's talk about it. So, <clears throat> if you've never read Dracula, I don't, please go read Dracula. Um, I think we get a little bit hung up when something is called a classic, at least I do. The word classic to me sometimes can refer to things that are long and sometimes hard to read and boring and therefore if it's called a classic I'm like, <sighs> okay, not Dracula people. It's really readable, it's very suspenseful, and it's marvelous. The characters in it are incredible. I think you need to go read it now. Do you get the point? So I was reading Dracula and I read this one sentence spoken by Dracula himself and I underlined it and I dog-eared the dog-eared it I dog-eared the page and here is my new release. Spoken by the man himself Man question mark? I think he could be called a man anymore, could he? Dracula says, I love the shade and the shadow and would be alone with my thoughts when I may. People? People. Isn't that the most perfect stitching quote? <sighs> the problem was I loved this quote so much that I designed it twice and then couldn't decide which version I liked better and so I just stitched up both. So this is the vertical version. It fits in an 8x10 frame and we'll go into fabric details in a minute. But here is the second version. I wanted to see how the quote looked like spelled out like in an old sampler style horizontally. And so here's the horizontal version. And it's the same quote. Bigger letters up top. I would say this one has more stitch. This one definitely has more stitching than the other one, but it's also pretty quick. The bat is the most dense stitching of either version. And I don't even know which one I like better. Thankfully, I don't have to decide because these models are staying with me. Okay, these are driving me crazy. There we go. 
So the vertical version is stitched on, I'm, if, if you're a stitcher and you know fabric colors, you already know what it's stitched on. It is stitched on, picture this, plus murky. It's a 32 count. The floss colors are exactly the same in both versions, although you do need one extra skein of rum raisin. That's this uh, dark maroony color for the horizontal version. So here's the floss pack. It's all Weeks Dye Works, the yummiest, most luscious fall colors. Uh, I'm not going to go through them, but they are delicious to stitch with. And then the main color of the bat is actually a silk. It's Dinky Dye's Black Coral. It is a dream to stitch with. If you haven't tried silk yet, this would be a great project to just try it out because you're just getting one skein. You're not investing lots and lots of money, not knowing if you're going to enjoy it. Oh, this was a lot of fun. I stitched this version and I had a blast and it went really quickly. Maybe because I was just dreaming about Dracula. So this is what murky looks like. And for both of these fabrics, I have a limited quantity available in my shop. In this age of fabric shortages, I bought up what I could and it's there. But if you waited like a week to watch this video, it might not be. This is Murky by Picture This Plus, and I think it is the most perfect, grungy, old, crusty, lovely color. I love it. Not hard to see either, even though you've got these darker spots. Not hard to see. So, the horizontal version was stitched on 28 count linen by Under the Sea Fabrics in the color Anubis, Anubis. I'm gonna say Anubis. And Murky's lovely. This fabric. Okay. It's <laughs> so pretty. Uh, look at that. It's like this chestnut, purpley, Brownie, mustardy goodness. It looks like a decaying pile of dead leaves. I love it. I love it. It's glorious. So that is Dracula, and I would love right now. Let's get a little book nerdy. Can I read you the paragraph that this quote came from? Because I, I love it. I love it. So if you haven't read Dracula, it begins with the character Jonathan Harker, who is traveling to Transylvania to meet with Count Dracula, who he has not met with before. He's like a real estate agent, although he's not called that. He's called a solicitor or something. But basically, Count Dracula has written by letter wanting to find an old crusty property in England so that he can move. And as Jonathan Harker is traveling to Count Dracula, he leaves the region where he can understand what anyone is saying. He cannot understand the natives. And once the natives find out, natives as in the people that live around Transylvania, once they find out where Jonathan Harker is headed, that he's going up to the castle Dracula, they start warning him and begging him not to go. But he can't really understand what's going on, and he's a little bit confused. And, you know, like all horror movies, he doesn't take good advice. <laughs> so he ends up at Castle Dracula and finds his host intriguing and a little bit hard to uh, read, but he thinks he's interesting at first. And then his sense of danger increases. And the beginning of the book is all told through Jonathan Harker's like journal entries. It's 
so good. But anyway, this paragraph uh, happens after Jonathan has told him that he found like this old property for Dracula in England and he, uh, you know, it's a bit broken down and musty and this is what Dracula says in reply. I am glad that it is old and big. I myself am of an old family, and to live in a new house would kill me. A house cannot be made hab habita hab habitable, habitable, habitable. <sighs> when I had finished, he said, I am glad that it is old and big. I myself am of an old family, and to live in a house that is new would kill me. When I had finished, he said, I am glad that it is old and big. I myself am of an old family, and to live in a new house would kill me. A house cannot be made habitable in one day, and after all, how few days go to make up a century. I rejoice also that there is a chapel of old times. We Transylvanian nobles love not to think that our bones may lie among the common dead. I seek not gaiety nor mirth, not the bright voluptuousness of much sunshine and sparkling waters, which please the young and gay. I am no longer young, and my heart, through weary years of mourning over the dead, is not attuned to mirth. Moreover, the walls of my castle are broken, the shadows are many, and the wind breathes cold through the broken battlements and casements. I love the shade in the shadow, and would be alone with my thoughts when I may. I think the best villains are 95% awful people, but 5% of them makes you feel sorry for them. <laughs> like Voldemort, like he's terrible. He's absolutely terrible, but there's just a small part of you that feels sorry for him. Um, that's Count Dracula, and that's what comes across in that quote, I think. He's old and he's sad, and he loves the shade and the shadow. Plus, bats are really cute. And I don't know how anybody could disagree with that. Uh, I have brought you proof that bats are cute. <laughs> because I think this is really funny. This is the Audubon Society Field Guide to North American Mammals, and I'm gonna show you what I find hilarious. So in the bat section of this book, let's talk bats. They show you the bat, but then they also show you this little picture that looks like a high school yearbook. And so you can see the bat's face. Okay. Welcome to my high school pictures of bats are cute montage. I want to be friends with him. We all knew that kid in high school, didn't we? Didn't want to meet him behind the bleachers. <laughs> or him, to be honest. <laughs> he might get poked in the face. <laughs> oh dear. Well, that was quite the diversion. I hope you enjoyed that. So, I have both fabrics in my shop. I also have floss packs and I threw these in my last witch will order because I love them. The Bill Hill buttons and beads kits. This one is called Ravens. The colors in this. The colors. Um, this one is called Moonstruck. All in my shop. My second release is my fall installment of my Weather Proverbs series. This one is called No Good for Man Nor Beast. And the proverb is a weathercock that spring springs swings to the east proclaims no good for man nor beast. And really, it's just all about the cow weather vein. A really fun pattern. This is stitched on 32 count. Dove Linen by Weeks Day Works. 
but seriously, it's just all about the cow. So that was all my housekeeping and my shop updates. Let's talk about what I've been stitching on. I have a finish, a new start, and my old projects that I'm plugging away at. My finish was Gertrude's Garden by Just Stitching Along. It looks like this. It is a very sweet, quick sampler. Sampler September is coming up. This was my first reproduction sampler that I've ever stitched. Have a few in my stash, but took the plunge on this one in May for Stitch Sania. I studded it up with my own color choices and had no idea, wasn't even thinking about moving. And then all of a sudden we moved and I was at my last house for 14 years and it was very sentimental to leave sentimental, um, nostalgic, the weepy weepies, you know, memories. So I decided to make this my memorial piece for our first home. And it was perfect. Here's what my finish looks like. I stitched this on 35 count Weeks Dye Works linen in the color Tin Roof. And I think it turned out so, so luscious. Um, whenever I change a complete color palette as I'm stitching, It makes me a bit nervous and it takes me probably a third of the stitching to feel comfortable with what I have done. And that was true about this one because there's some weird color choices in there and I think it turned out so rad. So rad. So some of my favorite flosses are, this is Gentle Arts Apricot Blush and it is so pretty and I love how the house really lets you see the variation in that floss. Another favorite, I think this one is an all-time favorite, this is Gentle Arts Copper. I, I can't even with that pink, it's so pretty. So I did a little bit of recharting. Uh, I put our address on there and then in the fence I put the year we moved in and then the year we moved out. And then it has all of our initials in it and um, Walt, the name of our cat, as you do. <laughs> and my favorite part are the people. Here's this lady with her hairdo and her knife and this dude. And I had the most fun day on Instagram when I asked you what he was doing and there's just so many possibilities. Like I thought throwing horseshoes, I mean really nothing explains his leg. <laughs> throwing horseshoes, collecting slugs, I, I don't know. But thank you for making me laugh so much that day. It was really fun. So that's Gertrude's garden. I recommend that sampler. If you're looking for a simple little piece to try out your color, pick your own color palette skills, this one would be a great one to stitch. I spent quite a lot of time on Huckleberry Farm since the last time I saw you. This is a pattern by the Blue Flower, Janine McGowan, my friend, and I love spending time here. It's so fun. And this is a sampler, Sampler September. Come to Huckleberry Farm with me because look how gorgeous it is. Look at it. This is 36 count, picture this plus linen in the color Haunted. It's fantastic. I was going to change the color of the house and I thought, you know what, let's give it a go. Why would I mess with this? Why? That's that.
Next up is Templar Prophecy by Long Dog Samplers. And suddenly I can't remember if I showed you this and when I worked on it, so forgive me, but I'm going to show it to you briefly again. I'm doing this mostly in Silks For You PR124. I wrote it on the back of the picture because I inevitably just make up a number. It's 124, and here's where I am. And I quite honestly don't believe I'm ever going to finish this. <laughs> I know I probably will, but when I look at that moon, the prophecy doesn't seem very good for me. I had one new start on my birthday, which is August 12th, and I indulged myself with, with the uh, prettiest little chart at market. And I certainly blathered about this chart enough to start it, so I did. It is ink circles after the roses. This is gorgeous. Look at these colors. I'm doing it in the classic color works. Help me, Rhonda. This is what my whip looks like. It's on 28 count. Picture this plus bramble, which is a really, really, really light pink with uh, streaks of green through it. Which I don't think that you're going to be able to appreciate once I get the whole mandala in, but whatever. When you're doing a mandala, does it bother you when you put it away even? Like, this bothers me, and I'm not going to be able to switch projects until there's four, because it's uneven. It needs completed. This is really fun. Although, truth be told, <laughs> Lots of color changes, and I know that I heard a lot of people say this about the Ink Circles pattern tapestry, just little color blobs, and yeah, I'm, I'm a person that likes to try to figure out the smartest way to do things, and so when I'm looking at patterns, I batch colors, and how much can I get out of this color before I'm forced to change colors? You can't, you can't really do that on this pattern so far. It's more little blob here, little blob way over there where you can't trail your thread, but it's a lovely pattern and it will be worth, it'll be worth every color change. Things I bought since I saw you last. I am now going to call this section presents to myself because that's just really what they are. I justified this purchase because I wanted it, and it was semi-close to my birthday. This is Elizabeth Isles. Someone said they thought that it was pronounced Eyeless. That's what I'm going to say now. Elizabeth Eyeless. I have eyed this chart for a while. And I don't know why. You know how I love words. I love words. So this chart in my mind is called Periwinkle Angel Pants. Periwinkle Angel Pants. And ever since that phrase came to me, I'm like, I have to stitch it now. Because every time I pull it out, I can say periwinkle angel pants. The giveaway last video was a piece of Mint Splash Lugana, and the winner is Glitterbug52 Fest 2002. Didn't have a name on it. That's who won it. Glitterbug52, if you'd like to email me, I will mail it out. The giveaway for this floss tube video is something cool. And if you like birds like me, here's a lovely little fall bird. The same artist that 
drew up the booby cards, which you can still find under my physical chart of Beach Dance. A little lovely little greeting card with the varieties of boobies in the world. Her name is Sarah Edmonds, and the last time I ordered more greeting cards, I had to throw these in. It's a tote bag with some of her art on it. The Starling. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he lovely? That's the giveaway. Of course, I'll put some more goodies in there, but basically that's what it is. So if you would like to be entered into the giveaway to win this adorable tote bag and some goodies from me in the mail, I would like you to answer the following question in your comment, which while you're commenting, hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss any videos from me. I would love that. Um, but the comment I would like you to make is I'd love you for you to tell me what your idea of fantastic online shopping, what am I saying? Tell me what makes for a wonderful online needlework shopping experience for you as far as customer service goes. So what are the things that make you say, wow, that was fun. Wow, I'm glad I ordered from this shop. I'm just curious because I have my own ideas and I would love to hear yours. So leave them down below for me and you'll be entered into the giveaway. <sighs> Let's just be random. I'm gonna switch cameras and I'm gonna answer whatever people ask me on Instagram while I was making this video. Okay. So I went on Instagram and I took pictures of your questions because <laughs> I'm recording on my phone and I couldn't look at Instagram and record myself at the same time. You don't care. You don't care. So here are the questions that I was asked on Instagram. Um, okay, we'll just start with the question that I get all the time, which is how do you get your hair, hair to look like that? How do you get your curls to look like that? And I will just say, you must look up the curly girl method for your type of hair. So curly hair is different than other hair. It behaves differently. You have to do different things to it. You cannot just get in the shower, shampoo and condition and towel dry and go, what's wrong with my hair? <laughs> um, and it also depends on what type of curls you have. So I, I almost really have wavy hair. Uh, my second day of my hair, this is a day one, second day, my curls will kind of just be flattened out and not looking great. My oldest daughter has tight ringlets. Her hair behaves totally different than mine. There's a wealth of knowledge out there. So I say, look up the curly girl method and try some things out. Stop shampooing your hair um, and other things like I could tell you my whole routine, but then I would be boring half of the people that are watching this video. And so, I don't know, email me. <laughs> Favorite hobbies other than cross-stitching? Do I have other hobbies? I make kombucha. I, what am I doing with my life? I pet my cat. I read books. I do a lot of reading. I enjoy reading. I watch Frasier. <laughs> is that is that a hobby? Is that a hobby? No, seriously, is that a hobby? Because if there's like a niche group out there for Frasier watchers, I might just go join a commune. I'm struggling to come up with other hobbies. I used to quilt. I used to crochet. Now cross-stitch has taken over my hobby-loving life. I raise children. That's my main hobby. 
Okay, two people asked me how I'm doing. And I really appreciate this, and it reminds me of how important this question is to ask the people that I care about, too. Julicious, and there was another one as well. Um, Corgi Stitcher both asked me how my family and I are doing. I really appreciate that. Let's ask that question more and then care about the answer. <laughs> I'm doing great. Um, I don't want to launch and do a COVID speech because we've all we all hear enough of it. But I really believe everyone is suffering to one extreme or another, to one degree or another. Whether it's your work life or your personal life or your family life, your finances, everyone's getting squeezed in different ways. And I was really reminded of how thankful I should be. When I was in the car the other day and NPR was doing a news story about how hard and nigh unto impossible public schooling has been during COVID. And I'm going to try not to get emotional, but it, it really was like a real a slap in the face for me and all my temptations to complain and whine and think that, you know, I have it hard. I don't at all. They interviewed a um, mother with special needs child, a, a special needs child who like, you know, for eight hours a day, like he was getting therapy. He was getting help. He was getting education. He was, he had all these people helping him at school. And now she can't get to work and he's not getting any of the services that he needs. And it, it just reminds me again that like there are people that are really vulnerable and that this situation has taken away so much from them. And who am I to be like so blessed that nobody I know up until this point has gotten sick. No one I know has been in the hospital. And that's not something that I can control. That's just a blessing that was given to me up until this point. Who knows what the future holds, but I'm just really thankful. I'm really thankful um, for so many things. And I need to remember those things instead of focusing on all the things I can't control and all the things I don't like about what's going on. So that's how I'm doing, way better than I deserve. Kyle asks, why are you so awesome? I can't help it, Kyle. Why are you so awesome? Okay, Here, here's where we get into it, I suppose. Jen Fenwick 11 asks, is there anything new you've accomplished or learned about yourself during quarantine? I I want to know this about every everything, everyone, everyone. Uh, I would love to say that I've learned a new skill or uh, even cooked a new recipe. <laughs> nope. Um, honestly, my life has just gone on pretty much on the way. My life hasn't changed dramatically. Um, I do miss my church, and I miss being in person with those people. Uh, I'll say I learned the value of, like, weekly contact with the same people every week who care about you is really important, and I really miss it. I wish I had an interesting answer to this question, but I would say the number one thing that I learned about myself especially because we recently moved, is that I can be more flexible than I thought I could. Uh, flexibility is something that I've always struggled with. I don't like my plans to be changed. And I don't like curveballs, like at all. But I have successfully hit like a hundred curveballs in the last two months and I'm okay 
and I never killed anyone. <sighs> through God's help, through God's help, because naturally, if I get sprung on, if you spring something on me, especially the day of, like, oh, I need you to do this in an hour. I don't like that. Um, and quarantine and all my plans being flushed down the toilet, I would say has made me a good person. And I would love to know that about everybody. How have you changed or what have you realized about yourself that you didn't know before? Um, I can be flexible and be a nice person at the same time with the Lord's help. <laughs> all those parts of the sentence are important. Tell us all about your new house. I'd love to see all your old projects too. This is from my Molly Klein Design. Uh, the new house is thinking awesome. I love it. Uh, this whole summer has just been insane for me. And like, I mean, really life alteringly, crazily busy and good. We didn't plan on moving. We thought we would die in the other house. We thought that that was where we would be until we got shuffled off to the nursing home. Um, and then, it almost felt out of my control. I'm just gonna say that. It felt like it was planned for me instead of me actually like doing it and making all these big decisions. Um, real estate is crazy, a crazy sauce right now. Um, the house we moved to was on the market for four days and we were in a bidding war and how we won that bidding war, I have no clue. Obviously we bid the highest price. I don't know. Like it was crazy. It was crazy. And the, the house we moved out of, we put it online and literally within half an hour our real estate agent was called and was like get out we're showing it now I'm like what huh what like she took pictures she went home and put it get out okay we showed it 12 14 times in the space of three days and we had like eight offers so our house was on the market for like five days four days I don't it was just crazy but our new home is lovely I never thought I'd say these words but I have a studio I have a whole room I have a whole room to myself guys I have a whole room to myself I cannot believe it. And I could not, let me just say, when I put all my business stuff in one room, right now we're in the living room, I could not believe how much stuff I had. But it was all shoved in different areas of the house. The garage, under the bed, in the closet. When you put it all in one area, it's like, oh yeah, this is actually a business. This is a real business. And it's doing real things and look at all this stuff and now it's like let's order more stuff <laughs> uh i will give you a studio tour i'm looking forward to that it's like coming into play you know when you move house like uh different areas are more important to work on and get habitable habitable before other areas and my studio i just need to be able to get to everything and I haven't like so far focused on making it look cute, which it needs to look cute, you know? <sighs> so yeah, moving was huge. Like whenever you move, like it's, it feels like your whole life, like all your stuff that you've owned and all your priorities get thrown into the air and you're scrambling around just trying to like get paperwork done and pack blah, 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 and then you get to your new place and it's like it all slowly like you have to process everything you have to process all the stuff you own and why you own it and why you have it if you don't use it and 
Um, do I need this? I haven't looked at this in 15 years. Why do I have, you know, all that stuff. You have to process all your belongings because you're finding new places for them and deciding if you even need them. And then because you're so far out of routine, you literally have to like rebuild your routine and your priorities piece by piece. So that requires a lot of processing. Why am I doing this? Why am I spending my time doing that? That relationship? Like, I didn't have time to talk to anyone. <laughs> oh. So hopefully everything has trickled down into a better spot. The kids are super happy. I am super happy. And we're getting a kitten. <gasps> we're getting a genuine Maine Coon kitten. And I wait. That is all I had for you today. Thank you for coming and visiting with me. I really appreciate it. If you would like this video, leave me a comment. Remember about the giveaway and telling me about your needle workshopping must experience list. That would be great. Um, you can catch me on Instagram. Don't forget to check out my new shop at lindystitches.com. Happy stitching. Happy summer. I hope that you and yours are doing well. <sighs> Keep in touch and do good work. Mm -hmm.